So here we've got a question from Sal, and unfortunately it's damp again. Why is there so much damp in this country? You can see on this pier here that there's this big damp that's just appeared there. Let's have a look at more because what she's saying is right, here's the damp. I drew this. It wasn't your kid, Sal. It was me. And I drew this arrow because of just thinking about where it was getting in because here's a pier. There'd be a steel beam going across there and what I'm thinking is that with no cavity traders, water dripping in, dripping off the end of that steel beam, maybe just staining that wall. So maybe that wall there has got a hollow section. In other words, it's a brick built pier, but whatever it is, it's somehow dripping down, say from the end of the steel or even between the steels, if it's two steels side by side there and staining the wall. Basically, they've got a room here and they've got this lean to roof thing that they've put in or somebody's put in between the main house and this room so it's one of those ones where it's been added onto and they've had damp and they were told that the roof pitch was too shallow for the tiles that were put on there so they had all the tiles taken off and they had this felt put on the roof it's quite a tidy looking felt job actually isn't it um, I'm not a huge fan of mineral felt, but it does work if it's done properly. You've got a bit of cover flashing over there. Well, it's working, isn't it? But up here, you can see render, and it's old sand and cement render, and it's the old, old story. It's very strong, and the bricks underneath are probably old sand and lime, a bit of movement there. Because it can't move, it just cracks the render. Doesn't matter how strong, you could put a three to one render in there, and it would still crack. In fact, it's more likely to crack the stronger it is. Maybe some of that water is coming in down the render, down that little bit. Uh, this is the main end of the house. That's just another shot of the same, but the render isn't in great nick. Right, so the, here's, here's the other bit. This is uh, where I said the child's room is. Now, you can see this is a semi-detached property. So there's the line, that paint line, where the neighbors start so they're only responsible for this bit of that parapet wall and somebody's had a go at putting some sealant around the flashing there in case it was the flashing that was leaking and on this end they've just got the brickwork which doesn't look too bad but it's painted again so if it had any little bits any little places it could come in it would do but the other thing is let's have a look at the other problem that this roof we don't know what this roof is we don't know whether this is a warm roof or whether it's a cold roof in other words whether the insulation is between the rafters and they've put this on top and if it is between the rafters then they really need some kind of ventilation and that would be lower vent and she said there isn't any vent down below in the soffit and there's certainly no vent up here on the parapet and what often it is done is that they put a bit of flat section off that parapet with some ventilation gaps underneath so that the air can come up under the roof and escape out of that parapet vent that top vent there's loads of different ways of doing it but that's the cheapest and easiest way is to bring a bit of upstand off there maybe the osb or something like that bring the lead flashing out over the top of that upstand and then down and that allows the air to escape. But without that, we don't know how much of that moisture that she's talking about is actually, excuse me while I find the previous pictures, we don't know how much of that moisture in the ceiling that she's talking about is actually the result of condensation. But I don't want to depress you, Sal, but there's a lot of different things going on there, aren't there? So um, it's one of those where people have added to the property and it's not really worked out brilliantly. I can't really work out where that gas boiler is. There was a boiler flue there and I can't see it anywhere, but that's what you get. There's never enough pictures, unfortunately. We need to see everything and anything. So that boiler is on the main house here. So I understand now. There's a bit of horrible beading, isn't there? You know what? I think when you see that stain on the angle bead, you always think, oh, they just put in ordinary galvanized angle bead there. But I got a load of angle bead and it was good stuff. It was one of the major brands, uh, 
Technic, uh, and it was their stainless steel angle bead. And I've noticed it's been in there about 10 years and you can see rust marks on it. So even the best, what you've got to use, of course, now they do the render plastic, which is the, um, the, the plastic angle bead, which is that ain't ever going to rust. <laughs> So I digress, that's a little problem, but I, you know, I would be looking to re-render that wall because it's just not nice, is it really? There's, there's definitely going to be water getting in there at some point and um, it's a big, a biggish job, but hack it all off, put on a bagged render, something a bit more flexible with a bit of mesh in it and um, it'll keep the water out and it'll deal with a bit of that movement as well. So, as I say, so I don't want to depress you, but that's my verdict. What do you think, viewers? What's you, what, how would you tackle a job like this? I know what a lot of you say. Knock it down, start again. Not everybody can do that. Sometimes money's a factor.